if you're a big Joey fan, you missed uh, Joey last week because he was at the battle at Bandon, his battle at Bandon. And this week, he has returned. Hello. Um, it's like the prodigal son or something. Yeah. More importantly, did you return uh, a champion? He has returned. Did you, did you lose in humiliating defeat? Uh, you know what? So I played about as well. So this is the first time I played. I played nine holes last weekend, uh, since surgery in October. Right. I went out and I shot 75, Mm. my first round back could not have put, I was rolling them in from everywhere and we ran into an absolute sandbag and buzzsaw of Ryan leaf. And he's, if it, he's oh a my god, the guy said he's a twelve point eight, oh. which he was at the time. But then had played a few rounds and got down to like an eleven something, and then I think he shot like seventy five, seventy eight on us, and or not on me, you know, the whole weekend. But he he was uh, he had it rolling anyway. Uh, Any um if it wasn't for Justin, um, we would have gotten steamrolled and then the next day i played like dog dog stuff and we scored a bunch of points against steve smith so you know you know how it is handicaps they just kind of even out so who ended up winning the whole thing yeah who won oh colorado hmm. colorado the buffs who was there yeah who were their guys mason uh, mason crosby and john Embry. oh okay. john Embry, yeah. the old coach yeah. the old coach yeah what's he exactly doing He's coaching, uh, coaching tight ends in the NFL. Oh, cool! And you can never, yeah. Kickers again. You They're think, always you think good. Kickers are always good. I always give quarterbacks a hard time because they don't have anything to do but play golf. But kickers, never, oh, ever, kickers. ever bet with a kicker on a golf course. That dude will kill you. Okay, so uh, Jason Hansen was our kicker in Detroit. Yeah, former coup. Our oh, from for he actually played battle band in one year. Um, our, I would say, turf management greenskeeper, um, super at the Detroit football facility, wanted to try his hand at uh, golf uh, maintenance, and so he actually put in a putting green and a tee box behind the equipment shed out on our practice field. So we'd be out there like deep into two a days, like. You know, and, and and look, I'm I'm not gonna I'm gonna be the first one to say that quarterbacks aren't exactly working their tail off, but yeah. like w- compared to Kickers. DBs and wide receivers, and you know they're just sweating bullets during the during the heat of the summer. And I look back, and Hanson's out there with his wedges, <laughs> like hitting hitting sixty yard wedge shots behind the uh, behind the shed during August double. I was like, what the hell are you wow. doing, man? Like. That's the life of a kicker right there. Is Crosby still kicking? Uh, I think this was his first year out. Okay. Yeah, he uh, he he did not play this year, I don't believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we talked to. Him. I think he's probably probably going to hang him up, but you know, we'll we'll see how it goes. How did Justin Herbert play? What what what's his golf game like? Justin hits it a mile. Um, you know, just not quite sure you know, which direction that mile is going to go, <laughs> oh dear. you know, but when he, uh, when he connects on it, Holy good God. Yeah. I think he's like, uh, I think he's like a, I think we had him down as like a seven handicap. So he's a good, I mean, he's a good player, really good player. Um, and, uh, probably scored more points for us. Like he was in like that perfect sweet spot for these kind of tournaments where you can have a blow up hole or two, you know, it doesn't really matter, but then you get a, you know, throw a birdie in there, a couple pars with a, with a stroke. And all of a sudden you walk out of there with, with six points on, uh, on nine holes. So he, uh, he was, uh, had some broad shoulders this weekend. He carried the team. Did he give you any scoop on uh, Jim Harbaugh and the new era of chargers football? Uh, Jim Harbaugh told him to check it down every time. <laughs> <laughs> he said they, they had a conversation he's like yeah jim you know we were talking and he says yeah justin how would you feel about every single time you drop back to pass what if you just checked it down <laughs> <laughs> and just is like well you know um I, it's probably not ideal but it's, it, that's something that I'll, I'll i'll take into consideration thanks coach okay good good talk <laughs> Well, we were talking about this the other day that, you know, there's a lot of young quarterbacks that, you know, the recipe for success is under center, 
right? Run the ball, play action pass, get it out of your hands, three step drops. And yet you've got like in, in, in LA, you got a Ferrari back there and you got an old man driving him that may keep him in second gear. It is going to be interesting to see how this, how this works. It, it is. I mean, the thing, the thing that I, I think people forget about Justin though, is, you know, yes, he is Dan Marino type arm, right? He's, he's, He's bled. Well, he's, he's Marino size. I mean, he's walking down the, the fairway, and we were me and Danny Farmer were looking back. It was like this dude is huge. Like he might be six. Like, he's a full six six. Like this is, and so he's got a cannon for an arm. But remember those years, you know, under uh, under Mario, where it was just like check down, yep. check down. He ran for three touchdowns in the Rose Bowl, right? <laughs> Using his legs, like ninety eight. <laughs> he, he I, I think it was I, I looked at it the other day I think it was 18 for 30 for like 120 yards but he ran for three touchdowns like this guy we've seen him cut it loose in the NFL but he has shown us that he can play so many different styles of football and he's just he's malleable he just adapts so yeah I, I'm sure that there's going to be plenty of second gear driving with the Ferrari but you know, uh, Jim may throw it into third every once in a while. Well, I mean, that's interesting you say that because that that could be a problem with some quarterbacks, right? I mean, yeah. if he gets Kyler right. Murray, Kyler Murray's not going to be, you know, if Harbaugh gets Kyler, you know, like I'm thinking, I'm trying to think of guys that'd be like, yeah, no, nah, I don't know about this coach. Maybe we should talk this over. But but Herbert's, uh, like you say, he's a coachable team player, guy. team guy. He'll do what the coach wants. But <laughs> Yeah, that's an interesting thought, coach. I'll take that into consideration. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for sharing. But he, yeah. he is one of those guys now when you, when you, you know, I still think about him. We covered him at Oregon and even as a rookie in the NFL. But every time I see him in the offseason, like it, it just goes to show you when you go into the NFL and you're 21, 22 years old, you're not quite a grown man. And that's what people don't get about the NFL. Like when you're 21, 22, you think you're grown. You're not. When you get to be 25, 26, 27, and then into like the early thirties, dude, you, you get like that grown man body. And Justin Herbert has grown into his. He looks like a completely different person now than when he first came into the league. That dude is built. Yeah. I, I would not be surprised if he put on another 10 pounds. I mean, the, the, the guy is, there's there's a reason he is where he is, and there's a reason he has uh, landed himself a second contract. So there you go. Who has the best arm quarterback? Who has the best arm you've ever seen? Mike Vick. Oh, really? Yeah, I've heard Without that. hesitation. Second, close second would be Byron Leftwich. Oh. Um, Byron threw it from his freaking knees. Like he would drop that ball all the way. It it was like. It was like Randy Johnson, you know, a lot, you know, how you talk about uh, if people are talking about quarterback mechanics, you know, balls up by your ear, you know, quick, you know, uh, quick release. Byron would go full on like baseball 360, like drop it down and just chuck the thing. Um, I stopped playing catch with him in the because it hurt so much, but Vic, I I'm not kidding. Like it was effortless. It was literally, he would, it looked like he would flick it, right? He just kind of had this little, like a little snap at the end of the release. And the thing would just jump. And it was, it was nothing for him to drop it out there, 60, 65 yards. And, you know, when he cranked into one, he could put that, put it out there over 70. I mean, it, it was absolutely phenomenal. When you're and around, it was always a spiral. When you're around those guys, it's just, it's different. When I got to Denver, Elway had retired the, the year or two previous, but he would still mill around. And he came out to training camp. We were in Greeley. And that's when we had, we had Brian Greasy, uh, Steve Berline. Elway was friends with Berline. And so yeah. Elway would hang around, and he would dink around during warm-ups. And, <laughs> and Elway had to be 40 at the time, right? Late 30s, maybe 40 yeah. years old. Oh, my God. I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, he put every one of those guys to shame, and he used to laugh because it would be like a joke. They would go get like a rookie, like receiver or whatever, like you know, the, 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 what do you like, undrafted free agent. And they're like, "Hey, come catch some passes, some Elway," and some kid would be all fired up about it. And then John would throw about two or three normal, and then he'd step into one, and you felt bad for the kid. Like, yeah, you some like you some of the people would refuse to play catch with him. You break hands. You you, you you know about the Elway cross, right? Oh, the, oh is that the, the from the, the tip of the football? Exactly. Yeah. Guys in the at the first part of his career would 
you know, finish practice with all of these like X's on the palms of their hands. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And it's because they would catch the tip of the ball and it was coming so hard that it would literally leave an imprint where the seam, where all the four uh, panels of the, of the leather ball came together and they started calling it the Elway cross. Like he would absolutely laser those things. Yeah, it's, you don't appreciate how much a ball can sting until someone like that. And I, I never caught anything from that. We had, uh, in Tampa, Chris Sims had a pretty yep. big arm and he wasn't a great quarterback or whatever, but he could hum it. And he was my, the guy that I would snap to. And so every now and then Chris would be a jerk and he'd be like, Sook! And you would turn and then the ball was on its way. And I learned to just duck and he would call <laughs> me a P word or whatever. I wouldn't put my hands up. That was the first time no. I can ever remember catching a ball and being like, I'm never doing that again. It, it feels like it's going to take the skin off. So I used to just duck out of the way and he would mock me, but I, and that's Chris Sims. I don't know what it would be like with a Michael Vick type, but it's, it's, those guys are different. They should go to Nerf balls. <laughs> well, the, fu- the funny thing is like all the guys, I mean, with the exception of Elway, obviously he was a hall of famer. And I mean, Vic, Vic was on his way, but, I also played with Drew Brees, yeah. right? And you could, yeah. you know, you could sit down and read a book in the time that Drew, <laughs> you know, he, he threw, you know, threw the ball to you. You'd, you'd flip a chapter through, you know, whatever you're reading, and then the ball arrived. But those guys, what's the uh, the phrase? I mean, throws a very catchable ball. Yeah. <laughs> Translation: catchable. Dude's got a no- he's got a noodle for an arm, but he can put it on a spot like Chad Pennington, yeah. right? You know, that, that, was, uh, that was his deal. But, I mean, look, it's not all about just how hard you can throw it. It's, it's, and you know this, it's the difference between a completion and a knockdown is literally about six inches. Well, right? you, so you can throw it as hard as you want, but if it's in the right spot, then <laughs> it doesn't matter. Do you buy into the, uh, the notion, I, I've heard this, and again, I don't play the position, but I, I've heard this where they say that sometimes the – the physical freak never really learns to play quarterback because he doesn't have to. He just, yeah. he, he can just go out and, and sling it and he gets by, but then you reach a certain level. And some of those guys do make it to the NFL, but they never really had to learn the craft the way Drew Brees was. And I've heard that some people think that having a truly special, like generational arm talent can actually be a detriment to you. Well, that, that, that was Mike's situation. He was so physically, I mean, when I got there, he, the guy didn't watch any film and he, he's admitted this too. He's yeah. like, he, he just, he'd go home and play Madden and, um, you know, and then things fell apart and, you know, ended up in prison. And when he came back, um, and ended up in Philly, like he learned how to study. He learned how to get the best out of his ability. And I mean, was, was incredible. Those, those few years in Philadelphia at the end of his career. Yeah. There's there, for sure. I mean, the NFL is littered with guys who I'm trying to think of the best word, like who never had to truly work Right. You know, everybody, everybody has to work to get to the NFL, but like your point, like I'm trying to think of the the, the best Probably analogy. It comes easy. You for know, him. It, it did like Roy Williams wide receiver with me. And, you know, he was at Texas. I mean, he had, I mean, I've never seen anybody with better hands than him. I, I kid you not. I mean, you give me anybody in the history of the NFL, and I will say, yeah, but I'd probably take Roy Williams in a, ca- like in a catching contest. In pure hands, in pure ball skills, in pure, like, it, it was absolutely ungodly what this guy could do to a football that was coming at him in the air. Hmm. But he never really worked on speed, explosiveness, route running, in and out of his cuts, right? Because nobody ever forced him to. Nobody ever challenged him. Nobody ever said, you know, you got to do this or you're not going to be on the field. Because if they didn't put him on the field early in his career, they'd be asinine. Like they would be out of a job because the guy was that good. But then you get to a point, like you said, where you're literally up against the best people in the entire world and things kind of level out. Uh, he, he still had some great years and, and had some of the most incredible catches I had ever seen. But that is, you know, those guys, I don't want to say are a dime a dozen, but 
the ones who truly stand out are the ones that say, I may be the physically the best, but I still need to work like I'm like I'm not. You know, the Ducks are doing that Generation O uniform line where they release the, uh, I forget what they call them, but the the DeAnthony Thomas mm -hmm. one. Fly, whatever. Yeah, Fly Up or something like something that. Something like that. Uh, did they contact you about doing a, a Generation O uniform? No. <laughs> That's a yes. You were involved. No. No, actually, no. They haven't? No. I was waiting for the releases just like everybody else. I was like, ooh, diamond plate with the wings. And Did you like yeah. them? Um, yeah. yeah I, I always – I mean, the, the only ones I've the, – the only ones that I didn't like – I didn't like the Kellen Clemens era, like, highlighter yellow yeah. with the – I didn't like those – um, Those immediately followed yours, right? Weren't wasn't there one in between, like kind of similar? The, I, for some reason, I think of Jason Fife as different than Kellen Clemens. I know they played they, but like Kellen's senior year, maybe I don't know. Um, yeah, I can't think of one that I that I don't like really. Um, I, I I'm not big on the 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 yellow on yellow. That's n never my favorite. But you know, God, uh, I, I still I could get uh, am nostalgic about the the Rose Bowl ones with the chrome. I the watching you guys that. Are? No, no, God, no, 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 no. The no. First, we didn't play on the Rose Bowl. Second of all, we didn't oh, have yeah. chrome. Thanks for thanks for reminding me. <laughs> um, but no, the ones that DeAnthony when they came out uh, in the Rose Bowl against Russell Wilson in Wisconsin, like yeah. that was just oh my God, the green with the chrome. That might be the greatest. In my opinion, that might be the greatest uniform that they've had. I'm taking no shots here, but the only ones that I it, – it's funny that I didn't like it when they started. I didn't like your guys's when, when – because I, I, I really liked the old stuff, the the early 90s with the, the, the U and the O interlocked and the yellow and the green. The what, What's now is the throwback. Like, I, right. I always liked those. And then when they went to your guys's and the Kellen Clemens – that was one that I had a hard time getting on board with. And then it was that next generation after that, like maybe the diamond plated stuff where I thought they really started to hit it out of the park. I don't know why. I just, I, I struggled with the change when, mm -hmm. when you guys first started doing it. I liked ours. I didn't like Kellen's not going to Kellen himself. Wonderful person. Great guy. Love him. Fantastic. Hey, Kellen, how are you? Didn't like your uniforms. Not going to lie. What did you think of the of all that stuff like when you were in it because it was new at that time but what did was it as innovative back then and as as they talk about now You know what it wasn't as big of a deal I mean it, it was a change for sure but I think what's made it more of an issue now is the constant rotation every week right people forget that we had we still just had one home uniform and one away uniform yeah. right you know, we had our whites away and we had our, you know, dark greens at home. And that was it. The helmet was cool, you know, because it had that iridescent like mallard, you know, almost kind of turned purple. And, you know, how you like you look at the back of like a wet duck and it like it shimmers. It was really cool. But it wasn't like we were changing every week. It wasn't like, you know, chrome to yellow to black to like, oh, what's it going to be next? week? you knew what it was going to be. It was going to be your dark greens at home. It's going to be your white on the road like that. That's. That's all it was. So there was the initial, like, hey, we're changing things, and then let's just go play. Now there's, like, the build-up, there's the reveal, there's the design, there's everything that goes into it. It's become a bigger deal now than it definitely was then. Yeah, I can't – it's so funny, you know, how in your, your head it's just revisionist history. I was thinking that all the way even back then they were swapping out multiple no. jerseys. No. But they weren't. No. Oregon was the first they were one. Not. Oregon was the first one to really do it. I I just I struggle with it because I was part of that uh Nike cuz Nike did this a lot like at BYU we went in a completely different direction. We changed. You the, went to the ugly. The, you look uh, like you were in a bib, like a, like you were in a spaghetti factory, and you're eating like yeah. You yeah. tied on a bib. <laughs> and and they changed our colors, and and they changed the why. And I just I was so pissed. And they did it with uh, a bunch of teams. Remember, Florida got some really weird ones there for for a couple years. UW went to the god awful, like they got away from the gold, and they went to like that weird mustard yellow color. For a while there, that was like with the beginning when Oregon was just, or uh, Nike was just starting to like experiment with some weird stuff. And I think it took a while. 
and I, they came back around it. And most of the stuff they do now with the teams, I think, looks really good. But there was a weird six or seven year period there where I hated Nike for what they, for what they did to me and, and, and some other people. So uh, this isn't uniforms, uh, but you mentioned Nike and and you know hating what they're doing. It reminded me. So we threw Wilson footballs. Right. Yeah. And when we got to my senior year, they said, Hey, you know, Nike's really taken, you know, we're going to, they, they started making balls. So we're going to switch to a Nike ball and they threw it to me and I grabbed it and I put my hand, I was like, no, we're, we're, we're not throwing this. <laughs> and he said, no, and coach like, no, we, we have to get used to it and, and throw it. I was like, no, the, the laces are, are they're a half an inch short. And he's like, what are you talking about? The laces are the laces. I was like, no, they're, they're not. And so we played a, we played a, a practice with it. And I went up to the equipment guy. I was like, Eddie, I'm not playing with this football. And he's like, no, you have to. I was like, put a tape measure on it. The laces are a half an inch short. And sure enough, they, they were a half an inch shorter than the Wilson laces. He was like, oh, man, you're right. I was like, I know that I'm right. I've been doing this for like my hand is my hand. The football <laughs> yeah. is a football. I, there are very few things that I know like that, but that is one of them. And so they switched. They actually changed the laces on the Nike footballs, huh. which other teams had been playing the previous year. And so it reminded me because BYU called over to, the, to, to Ed Garland over at the equipment room and – absolutely let him have it he's like what are you doing you can't we want we like the laces and you got to change the laces because you're a quarterback and so they ended up going back and they 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 flipped the laces back to the original ones that they had before and they said we'll just switch over next year when kellen takes over (laughs) so we played (laughs) so we played the wilson footballs by senior year because because the laces didn't line up right okay so so your hand size it just had to do with your specific hand size that you didn't like that you liked it. I, I just didn't like it. Yeah, there were there were two. Wilson made a 1005, which was a skinny, a, a thinner football that Achille and AJ liked. I liked the 1001, which was built more like the NFL ball, which was fatter in the middle. And the the Nike ball was fatter, but it was a little squattier. And so the laces were were a touch shorter. I was like, nope, doesn't work. It's not right. So. <laughs> They waited until next year. That weird transition. It's funny you bring up Wilson because my my Wilson story is when I got to BYU, we were a Wilson team. All our uniforms were made by Wilson, and then we became a Nike school. And I, probably because we were just insignificant or we were cheap or whatever, but we just took the Wilson. Like it was, if you look, I'm sure you can find old photos of it, but they just took a crude like circle, like a Nike patch and just cut a circle and then sewed it over the Wilson patch. And it didn't really <laughs> match very well. You know what I mean? Like, you could clearly tell. But I, all our uniforms for my first two years were Wilson uni- Wilson pants, Wilson jerseys, with a crude Nike swoosh sewn over the top. And I was like, what sort of janky athletic program do I have here? We can't even get Nike to make us unis? Or at least, like... I don't know, get a get a patch that lines up. Like, the patch wasn't quite the color of our jersey. It was like we were in a bowl game, and they just Careful put a what bowl. you wish for. You, you ask Nike to make a uniform, and you end up with a spaghetti bib. <laughs> that is you know? true. I got two years of the Wilson unis, and then we went to those damn bibs. Should have gone to UCLA. <laughs> when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's BYU. And some and some people locally, the other twist of that, and I still get crap from it. I guess when we finally got rid of those hunks of crap, they sent them to Camby. Somehow there was some sort of connection, and Camby High School got them. Oh wow! So the the Camby whatever Shout out the Camby Cougars. Yeah, the Camby Cougars had to wear our bib uniforms for ye- <laughs> for years after that. And every now and then oh. I'll run into a Camby guy and be like, "You son of a gun!" If they're good enough for Camby. They're good enough for BYU. That's right. All right. Um, well, we must roll. Thank you. Glad you enjoyed. Thank Bandit. you. Yeah. It's 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 good to be back. It's right. it's good to be back in the family again. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Uh, see ya. The great Jerry Harrington, right there. I think that Oregon State should have a special uniform just for Oregon. That's like a duck hunter camo style. Ooh, I like a, that. That's idea. actually a pretty good idea. What?
yeah. for if if someone at Nike would come up with that. That's kind of a fun because you know Oregon did the one uni, and I actually think it kind of worked. It was weird where they did the actual duck with like the orange duck feet and the and the face mask. The, for the fact bill. that you were cosplaying the mascot with your uniform was a little weird, but it did look I okay. It, was cool. it, it, it kind it of worked. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah, it worked. It did work. I mean, I, I was an old curmudgeon back in the day, but most of the stuff that Oregon puts out, I think it looks really good. And Oregon State, if they were to roll out for this Civil War, which is so weird, obviously, at the start of the year, and they rolled out in a duck hunting camo uni, I mean, come on. Someone at Nike make that happen now. Don't hate it. No. The two things, well, first of all, I looked up Joey's old uni that you were talking about. I'm yeah. with you. I didn't that's, like them. I, that was, that's it was ugly. My, I, and then it Not went great. into the Kellen ones. Both of those. I just, yeah. I hated that era. Well, the but, green and the Kellen ones was like, a, it was almost like an army green. It wasn't like a yeah. true green. It was kind of weird. And then the, the other one that I really disliked, and it was, I think it was a little later than that, was the ones where they had the numbers that looked like it was duct tape. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and they were giant, about. and they were yeah. it was they were almost looked like that. they were like rudimentary, like scratched. Yeah, yeah. like a digital the alarm was, clock. Yeah, yeah, I didn't it like bad. it. But they've they've dialed in now. Oh, where, dude, dude, they're and the 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 omica the the O on the back with the wing, like it's it's a it's a sharp look. You can hate them all you want. See, I don't like, prefer, be bitter, but it, it's it's a good look. I like the O's on the side. Like Joey's helmets, I thought were the best. The ones that actually yeah. mimicked the mallard head, and they they were like I used to give tours in the facility. That paint cost like four thousand bucks a gallon because it had <laughs> real gold in it. Jeez. Um, God. but yeah, but um, but the. There's just there's so many things from the that they've tried to incorporate that I think the O on the back looks weird. I like the idea of the wings, but putting an O on the back looks like uh, I don't know. I'm not for it. It's unique. It's the only one of its kind. They should have consulted Buck. The kids love it. I'm All old right. school. I like the the first the '95 Rose Bowls, and they do those now with the throwbacks. Still my favorite. Look. I like what Oregon does. I really do. I think it looks great. But I also love what Penn State does, and yep. I love what USC does. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, there's room for the classic I like all Bama that. and the, yeah. you know, Texas. There's some places that don't change. Yeah. And I do think it's cool that in this, they, they resist the the modern, the, the yeah. modern flair. I don't like what Maryland does. Dude, How that, about that? That thing's nightmarish. They're uh, crash test dummies. 